Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. But the fun doesn't stop there, no sorry. Every few episodes, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will ask you, the listener, to vote on which movie they will play as an RPG, recorded in video and in glorious black and white, and brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Welcome to the first episode of Have Movies Will Game, a podcast that has just been introduc- introduced. Introduced! Introduced! <laughs> Should the uh, opening uh, segment actually have been recorded by the time we release this. And that, that we really hope. Um, speaking of introductions, I'm Matthew. And I am Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. And we have just completed a torturous sound check. We're staring at each other like rats wondering who gets to hit the feeder bar first. And this <laughs> will hopefully be our only beer-free episode. I, I, yeah, I think so. Yes. Probably, because somebody let the beer go, go dry. That is a sad, sad state of affairs. It was like two days ago. And, and, then, and then another person had to get retribution by drinking all of the bourbon, pretty much, by himself. I took two swigs. Well, that ended the bottle of bourbon. <laughs> it was a sad day for old Technically, Matthew <laughs> ended the bottle. <laughs> you know, if that wasn't 100 proof, I would have just let you have that. <laughs> but, you know, anything that backwashed in there was pretty much dead at that He's point. Dead. Pretty much. So, yeah. uh, so welcome, once again, our intrepid listeners to our show and this week uh we are actually we sat down each of us and we watched fifth element god i love that movie oh it's a great movie i love it, it, it it's it's wonderful uh i, I before you say anything yes please go right ahead this is our first episode yes and we're doing fifth element yes so i just want you to know the shadow that all of the rest of our episodes are going to be living on. <laughs> it doesn't come more awesome than the fifth element. The fifth element is fun. It is it is it is fun. It's really yeah. I know it's the twentieth anniversary, but mm-hmm. seriously, I can't think of anything that will top this movie in game worthy awesomeness, except maybe Judge I, Dredd. Judge I, Dredd. I, I, I have a feeling that uh Valerian will probably top this. And, I hope and we'll so. we'll be touching on that one. Yeah. That uh, might be the only episode that lives up to this one. Probably. Um so yeah, fifth element. So we each sat down in our own in our own place and watch the fifth element and now the fifth element i'm sure by this point 20 years later everybody spoilers. has probably seen this movie but if not there are going to be some spoilers throughout this throughout this podcast motion motion of order yes please i don't think we ever need to say this again unless we're doing new releases i agree with you yeah yeah i think cuz a lot uh, of the movies on the list are old i mean we're going to have you know like mad max beyond thunder yeah Bell yeah if, if you haven't seen it six string samurai no offense but your your life has been a wasted and broken thing, <laughs> and you need to examine your priorities in life. I, so. I agree. Although I did have a, f- a friend once, we were talking about Raiders of the Lost Ark, and uh, she had never seen it, but she was also only 23 years old. Yeah. And this was like eight years ago. Th- there's a, a generational disconnect that I've noticed happening, especially since I've just hit 40. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, hey, join the club. Oh, Woo-hoo. cheers, man. Yeah. I, I actually heard that uh, the, the new Star Wars were great, but that the old ones seemed silly. And something within me oh. broke, and I, and I realized that I was halfway to my death. <laughs> that, that I was that guy. What do you mean you don't love Casablanca or so something? Were you, you know? were, you, were you hearing the Imperial March somewhere in the background, like that death knell almost? Man, it was such a big part. I heard the Imperial March played at my high school graduation. Oh, yeah. I heard it every I mean, football game. I hear the Imperial March in my head every time I'm on the toilet, but... <laughs> You know, I'm glad you didn't go with orgasm. Yeah, but my, sad at the same no, time. No, that's a different song. <laughs> one of these movies we'll get to. So, oh my God, sorry, you you were no, introducing no, the movie. Yeah, my no, bad. that's fine. Yeah, so uh, the Fifth Element. Hi, how you doing? The fifth Element. I mean, to start right off the bat, the Fifth Element is complete brain candy sci-fi poppiness. I mean. Oh, it is great. one of those it magical is. movies yeah. that comes around once a lifetime. Yep. It, it, it is visually inventive and it's gleefully over the top. But one of the things I really like about it is that it never takes itself too seriously. Oh no, no, it, it pokes it, fun it, at itself with with like abandon. Yeah, it knows it. It's got like this horrible making fun of itself, you know, yeah. mentality through the whole thing. So, but it also has those great traditional elements 
that are thrown together, you know, in, in standard form, you know, good versus evil, man versus aliens, man versus man, man versus environment, throw in the romance, these awesome chase sequences. And lots of nods, too, to a lot of older movies. Did anyone else catch any of that? Like, oh, yeah. All over the place. Yeah. The, the, the Leia buns on the, the guy, they were tr- on the girl they were trying to set up as his wife when they What's were first getting her? the tickets. Oh, yeah. And she does uh, that, that head motion. Major but- Iceborg. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Major Iceborg. <laughs> Uh, which is an interesting name. All of the characters in this movie, like everything feels alive. Yeah. Yes. As silly as it is, as campy as it can be, and as unrealistic as some of the elements, every aspect of this movie is popping with life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to go to there. there there's, there's, yeah. n- there's not a part of this movie that didn't have a talented person in it. The sound design was amazing. Mm-hmm. The... Um, like whoever designed all the fashions. Oh, that was John Paul Gaultier. Oh yeah, 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 right. He did all the designs for the for the costuming. It was, it was, it was visually stunning. How they did um, the the human space fleet. Mm-hmm. Those, I mean, I just finished because you know, power nerd. I just finished reading a, a, a long essay on what realistic space battles would look like. Mm-hmm. Those ships fit the mold. Um, you mean the discount the, Star Destroyers? Yeah, the, <laughs> the design of them. Yeah. Um, because uh, they can roll. They're, they're ready to uh, Oh, yeah, d- they deflect. own that, the other axie. Yeah, and uh, the, the roundedness of them instead of the straight plane mm-hmm. uh, is to help deflect kinetic impact weapons. Oh. I mean, th- there's every element, and I have to stop saying elements. I need another <laughs> word because, you know, fifth element. But every, <laughs> every part of this movie had amazing people working on it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, it it shows. It yes. shows in the movie. Every person in the movie seems unique and interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like, like they could do whole other stories, other movies off of a lot of the characters. Oh God! Yeah. Like, okay, it's... the president. Mm-hmm. <laughs> how cool is he? How how did he get elected? What's his story? Where did he come from? Why does he get that bruise? What did he did he get into a fight on the way to his first appearance? What like, the what hell happened? is wrong with his eyes? What's wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or the scientist who's like, oh, she's perfect. Oh, that the guy. mad scientist. Yeah. I want to see a day in his life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I even like the, the 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 color scheme. Like when you're when you're in the urban zones, mm-hmm. it's it's Blade Runner. Oh yeah, it's, it's like it's, muted colors in some areas. Yeah, it's, and... it's it's dark, and there's the like uh, like quasi gothic architecture happening with sci-fi, and then you have like these fifty styled air cars. Yes, and uh, oh, it's so good. Yeah, and uh, there's there's actually some interesting like background stuff going on with a lot of that that yeah. a lot of people don't know. Uh, the novelization for the for the from from the movie, the you know the fog that they talk about. We're gonna yeah, hide in yeah. the fog that they never explain why there's fog. They never explain anything. No, they never do. Or the trash in the in the, the, in airport. the airport. Yeah, uh, they the never explain board, that. Me. They never explain that either. But in the novelization, in the background scenes, uh, what's going on with the fog is that New York has they didn't have enough room to expand out to build in New York, so they just kept going oh. higher and higher and higher. The fog is actually the smog from the lower part of the city coming right. up. So every few years, it gets higher and higher as it tries to escape through the atmosphere. Did so you that's catch the, fog. The, the the population count yes. that they said on the planet? Yeah. 200 billion! <laughs> yes. And uh, what was the... It was uh, apparently because it was 300 years later from the intro scene with Aziz Light. Yeah, and there's a, there's, there's a little mistake. 249 so years. Yeah, there, there, there's there's a mistake on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Though to be fair, I only caught one other continuity error in the whole movie, and I I look for that shit. So do I. And there was only one. Which one? Which was one? It? It's was it the near glass? the end. No. Oh, okay. We'll get to that. What's your what's okay? Your so he pulls the uh, the stones, right, or earth, fire, or whatever, mm-hmm. out of her body. The the, the Plava Laguna and uh, the fucking uh, Ruby Rod throws them in the in the in the suit jacket, and um and then they run and things explode. Mm-hmm. And then they're in the temple, an immediate flight, straight down, dropping like an elevator. And they pull them out, and there's no blood on them. They're oh, absolutely yeah. Absolutely clean. Yeah. I've, I've noticed that, too. Like, licked clean. <laughs> Why wasn't there a dead man to show in there when they arrived at the temple? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's another interesting question. Yeah, that's question. another good... That, that, it adds for story. You just hand wave it. But uh, the biggest, like, continuity mistake that I... Well, it's not really continuity, but it's more of a placing of... of fakeness yeah uh it's when lilu is in the uh in the tube 
and the guy's like, you need to to learn those your, 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 the correct <laughs> words. And the and the guy that the, the editor on the movie he said recently with the twenty year he never noticed it until somebody pointed it out. But you can really see it on the on the high def is that where she punches her hand through the glass. It's, it's like s- perfectly etched out yeah. uh, with edges. And no, he said he never noticed it when he was editing, and he felt really, really bad about that. Yeah. So he said, oh, I feel like, I feel like shit. But the, the story itself, I, I'm, I'm sure everybody has probably uh, already seen Fifth Element, but it's real simple. Ultimate evil is coming to subdue, subvert, and destroy the denizens of Earth, and the only supreme being uh, is Lilu. Uh, who can stop it? And she's the chosen one, the the Messiah narrative, uh, which is nothing new to sci-fi, uh, and it's also mixed in with the hero's journey trope that you know Corbin Dallas takes. So, yeah, it was a fun movie. I've, I've I love this movie. There's another familiar thing in there too, and that's uh, the retired warrior. Yeah, there's um, that co- coming back for one last fight, and that that is something that's great. Like uh, the old, oh, I'm gonna fuck up his name, David Gerald. Did uh, Waylander and some other uh, famous fantasy books, and that's that's oh, basically yeah. okay. His whole gig mm-hmm. is uh, the retired warrior coming back for one last fight, it, and it, it's done so well. Here. It would have worked even more if he if if Dallas would have died at the end for that yeah. like you yeah, know, retired agreed. warrior, but it you know it, it didn't. So, but you know, he gets a makeout scene with Milia Jovovich. I mean, that's got to <laughs> knock at least like three million off the price tag oh, of that actor. That I mean. look <laughs> they gave each other. If I ever got that look, <laughs> oh my god, in that. In that Tube, yeah, they're, they're, oh, eyes they're busy. Met, yeah, or they pause for a moment and they look at each other. Yeah. Her mm-hmm. face, oh my god! I saw that movie eleven times in the theater when I was uh, seventeen, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a reason, <laughs> <laughs> many reasons, but that's definitely one of them. That mm-hmm. look. One of the reasons why I saw it was because, uh, other than just being sci-fi and pretty and fantastic and just pure brain candy, uh, was because Luc Besson is the writer and director of it. Yeah. He's uh he's doing the upcoming Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, which we will be doing uh, a review on that one. He also did Lucy with Scarlett Johansson, which I really enjoyed. Uh, he also did The Messenger, which is the story of Joan of Arc. Uh, I the, liked that one. I thought it was great. My favorite part was Dustin Hoffman in it, though. Eh, eh, eh. Sorry, excuse yeah. me. Uh, sorry, sorry. Wrong movie. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I also did Leon the Professional and La Femme Nikita, only to name a few. Uh, so when when this movie came out, it came out in 1997, and Luc Besson was 38 years old when it came out. And he had been working on the script, actually, since he was about the age of 16. And not a lot of people know that. Um, uh, he wrote it with no intention of making it a movie. Uh, but by the time he was 38 and the plans to make it a movie came about, it was a 400-page tome of a sci-fi adventure. Now, most movies are about a minute per page. Yeah. So that would be like into the realm of Lord of the Rings expanded yeah. versions. So uh, the original storyline was set in like 2300, uh, and it was about a nobody named Zaltman Bleros. Which is I like far, Zaltman. It's a far cry from Corbin Dallas. I, I'm stealing I, Zaltman. <laughs> that's my Zaltman next. Zaltman Blaros multipass? No, no, no. <laughs> that, 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 that's my next mage. And Zaltman. That's a good mage name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, he wins. A, a, and, and the rest of the story goes basically he wins a trip to Club Med or a type of resort on the same planet, Floston Paradise. He meets Lilu, who's a sand girl. Uh, who is an immortal type. Sand? Yeah. It, it's As like, in gets everywhere? Yeah, sand gets everywhere. That's what like the original notes are, quote, sand girl. That's what she's called. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she's an immortal type being who had already lived for over 2,000 years and was the chosen one to destroy the coming evil. I think the love play would have been a lot different if she was composed of sand. That's <laughs> both gritty and abrasive and very, very Ow. dry. That's... Ow. I'm sorry, carry on. No, it's okay. So he was trying to get financing for the movie, and he continued to work on and modify the story for years. Uh, In 91, while he was looking for actors for the film, uh, Besson had met the French comic creators. uh, I'm probably going to butcher these names. What you got? uh, Jean Girard and Jean-Claude Mezeret. Uh, and they had been recruited. Uh, it sounds kind of French. Uh, they were recruited <laughs> <laughs> to uh, to do the film stylistic and all the artistic um, production design. Uh, Mesere, if I pronounce that, wrote the book "The Circles of Power," which contains a character named Strax who drives a flying taxi cab through the congested air traffic of the vast metropolis of his his or her home world. Okay. 
Uh, so when he showed those images to Luke Besson, Luke was like, I'm going to change everything. I'm going to, I want to use this. This is what I'm going to do in the fifth element. Instead of having the main character be like a, a broken down rocket repair ship person and then getting rockets back into space. Because that's what Corbin Dallas initially was. It wasn't yeah, that's this, more Red Dwarf than... It wasn't, yeah. he wasn't like some military hotshot pilot. Right. You know? uh, the company that owned the rights to the Circles of Power actually took Luke Besson uh, to trial for copyright infringement because of the scenes that were used. And it was later well, dropped. they also did something called the Inkall, which was the predecessor, I believe, to the Meta Barons comic book series. Uh, so I, w- I was reading about because awesome. I was a big Meta Barons fan. Okay, and I remember you could look. I don't actually know if those those names match up, but I did read about a lawsuit from the guys behind the Meta Barons mm-hmm. because of a lot of thematic similarities uh, with their story of the Inkle. Huh? The interesting. Inkall, however, it's pronounced. I never went down that rabbit hole. Yeah, I, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, I was thinking that you would take this over from me. No, 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 no. That, 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 no, that's fine. So, uh, Besson actually went back. Um, he did Leon the professional uh, before this was done, and the movie another co- older man with a younger girl. Yeah, and and also Gary Oldman playing the bad guy. Fuck and Gary the, Oldman, the, man. The, the, the same guy that did the music for Fifth Element did the, the music for, for Leon the Professional. You see a lot of the same people mm-hmm. in, in Luc Besson's movies. Uh, and, you know, the same people that worked on all of his movies that work on, on every single one, So which is cool. So the studios basically hung out a carrot to Luc Besson and said, if Leon does well, then we'll let you make your silly little sci-fi movie. And <laughs> little did they know. Well, yeah, they, 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 I don't think they were counting on Leon doing as well as it did in, in the domestic and international market. And it did really, really well. Um, so that was done. And at that point, Basson goes back to shooting and getting everything set up for the fifth element while shortening that 400 page tome that he had to something more manageable you know so i mean 400 minutes is a long yeah. movie as well as trying to bring the budget down to 90 million because at the time that was an expensive movie in the yeah. in the late 90s that was a, a hell of expensive movie to be to be doing columbia pictures who actually had a financial stake in leon agreed to finance fifth element after everything that was done with leon uh, and also Gary Oldman kind of had some urging because he, he owed uh, Luke Besson a little bit of a favor because of what was what happened with Leon. So, OK, so the story goes that Besson was sitting in, I think, his agent's office or, or uh-huh. someone high up in in the the production company when Bruce Willis actually called uh, uh, regarding a different film. And Besson had asked to speak to Bruce Willis and, and just to basically just to say, hey, how you doing? And proceeded to tell him, we're moving forward with the fifth element, but you're no longer attached to it because you're you're too fucking expensive. I mean, OK, yeah. That was this. Th- that was Luke Besson telling. And Bruce that's how Willis. they got so, the scene at the yeah. end in the tube. Pretty much. Yeah, because, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was expensive at that time and, and, and probably uh, still is. I mean, yeah. And apparently Willis said that if I like the film and I like the script and I like where it's going, then we'll figure something out so I can be in it. Right. So Besson said, OK, let's let's try this. And production started in early 95 and it, and it came out. So um, rounding out the actual cast is. Bruce Willis plays Corbin Dallas. Sir Ian Holm gets a hold of Cornelius the Priest, which I, is... I, I need to bounce in on that. Ian yeah. Holm is one of my all-time favorite actors. Yes, I've been I following agree. him since 89 With in the, the Kenneth Branagh Shakespeare series. Oh, yeah. He's in all of those. Yes. Um, he did an amazing... I don't know. I mean, before we had podcasts, what we're doing right now, there mm-hmm. were books on tape. Yes. And my favorite book on tape of all time is the second BBC Lord of the Rings with Ian Holm. And I have listened to that man's voice in my life Mm -hmm. easily for a thousand hours. I I have listened to that back and forth, forward and back. And that man is amazing. If you have not listened to Garth Nix's Sabriel, read by Tim Curry, I believe it will challenge (laughs) that holder. Ooh, it too late, man. There's childhood amazing. memories wrapped up in it. I mean, it's, it there's, there's no digging it out now for for another first place. It's just not. No, no, that, that's I. I there's some things that I have, I feel the same way about. Now yeah. I do have to interject. Yes, uh, please. I, I am, was incorrect. I had to just look it up. It was Moebius and Alejandro Jodorowsky who oh. did the in call. 
And are you, are you talking Mobius sued. like of heavy metal fame? Yep. Oh, God, I love him. And uh, Metal Hurlant and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he also supposedly did a version of Dune that never got released. Oh, my God, it's gorgeous. Yeah. But uh, Luke Besson, they, they, uh, there were a number of similarities mm-hmm. between the Fifth Element and uh, the Inkle. And yes. They actually, the comic studio that made that sued Luke Besson, but I think it got dropped after the Fifth Element was released sometime right. later. Oh, okay. Uh, Chris Tucker plays Ruby Rod. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what happened to him? So, in in what respect? Where is he now? Where's he's he gone. Go- he's when ba- was the last he's, time he's you back saw on Chris the comedy Tucker circuit? Movie. Yeah, he's doing the comedy circuit, and he's uh. that's kind of where he started. So he went back to it. I I think after the Rush Hour movies, I think he kind of yeah. got burnt out. And not only that, if we're, if we're asking what happened to people. Fucking Luke Perry was in it for a moment. Yeah. What, was what? Even what happened? Yeah. I, I, I think that was a favor to like, for like. Is he just, still alive? I Did think he? I think that brought in because I don't. Bruce Willis was a fairly solidified action star by that point. Yeah. Oh, certainly. Um, but I don't think his name carried the movie enough. So I think putting Luke Perry's name mm-hmm. up on like in the opening credits kind of maybe like pushed it a little bit more because he was still riding high off of like Beverly Hills 90210 or whatever. I want to say yeah. that that for the for the brief time we had him like uh, when when the aliens are walking in the first waddling in mm-hmm. not really walking. The big potato bugs. Yeah. They're amazing. <laughs> oh, yes. by the, way. the designs his, on their suits were. Oh my wow. God. His facial expressions and his panic to crawl back against the wall but still feverishly sketch was it was it was really that was that was good acting. No it, Not it, what it I was. would expect from a serial television actor you know that that that, it was very done some good shows though he's done some good like sci-fi shows he has jeremiah if anybody ever saw that he did really good no i i I think he kind of got had another has been uh malcolm jamal warner was in that one too i think he kind of got shoehorned into that spot like uh c thomas howell being a decently good actor But never getting that that grab role, so you do all the real shitty roles. They always say that it's it's ninety nine percent luck. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, that's but honestly, I, I was very impressed by what he showed me in the very brief moments that we had him on screen. I was like, sketching. oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. The sketching proves it doesn't matter what time frame in history, someone's going to stop and do a selfie of something. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, Chris Tucker played Ruby Rod. And so interesting thing about the, the character of Ruby Rod, initially Luc Besson wanted Prince to play Ruby Ooh. Rod. That was who, who he designed and molded Ruby Rod for. And John Paul Gaultier had, had designed all the clothing for was Prince. <laughs> now here's, now here's, here's where, here's where this gets a little even weirder. Print, apparently Prince came in and looked at, at all of the, the, the clothing, all yeah. of the costumes that he would be wearing. And Prince, Prince said that the character was too effeminate. Well, that's an interesting thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I mean the 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 the, the backless evening gown bit that he wears in the gunfight <laughs> with the roses around the collar. I can. No, it's not an evening gown. I suppose it's a the a, a velvet pantsuit. I, I guess. It, it's and, then, and then the curly hair. Oh you know? my god, <laughs> uh, the, the dildo head. Yes. But uh, <laughs> apparently, also uh, there was a meeting with Luc Besson and Prince about the character, and Luc Besson had his accent was a little too thick mm-hmm. so whatever he said prince heard it as fuck prince and it wasn't that so <laughs> prince got angry and left and then the part went to chris tucker who killed it yeah killed he was it. great yeah i can't imagine it with prince i think prince but you can see where you can see yeah. prince where where you can see where there I was a very see, oh, yeah. a very fine line of like prince and chris tucker it would have a totally different vibe oh it would it yeah. totally would um, but the original name of even Ruby Rod was Lock Rod, L O C R H O D. So the name baby. appears in both the original script. That's a little and too tough in the novelization. The I know, but check know. this out. So there's been a lot of speculation uh, about the name change, which was a play on the information on the periodic table, because rubidium is the first of the period five elements, mm-hmm. and it's exactly halfway down the row uh, to the element rhodium. So taking the first half of each element gives you Ruby Rod. I see. Yeah. Uh, others have speculated that his name was a play on his gender-bending personality, which I kind of like a little bit more, having a feminine first name and then a phallic last name. In in a less well-developed 
and less subtle, you know, comedy movie, mm -hmm. I would I would say that that's probably more likely. But just the level of detail they go into this movie. It could be the periodic table because yeah. there, are, there are people with serious minds and degrees yes. thinking about things on the back end of the production of this movie. Oh, yeah. And the, and there's also the, the characters that are just insanely intelligent, the scientists that are, you know, basically they've rebuilt an entire person. You know, they uh, 3D printing. it. Yeah. Actually, 3D printing. Which I yeah. thought was very interesting for the, for the flesh time. wires. Yeah, yeah. Flesh yarn, basically. <laughs> So the movie itself had a ninety million dollar budget, which, mm. it, like I said earlier, a few moments ago, in, in nineteen ninety seven, that was that was high. I think the only other movie that was close to that at that point in time was that ill fated Kevin Costner movie, Waterworld. Oh, right. That had like seventy two million dollars. Love that. I would movie. like to know that Waterworld spoke. is not on our list. <laughs> no, it's not. And we're going to keep it on. <laughs> That's fine. I'm telling you, I could yell for about forty five minutes about his role in Robin Hood, though. Yeah, so could I. When I killed the sheriff's man. <laughs> hey, man. I, I, Don't you be making fun of us, Southerners. I, I, all right, I'm not going to get into it, but I, I love that whole movie except for him. Yeah. <laughs> you know? the, the Robin Hood movie where everyone except him has an English accent. Yeah, yeah. it was brilliant. So when, when Fifth Element opened, it debuted at number one, uh, grossing an extraordinarily high... Seventeen million dollars. It's opening weekend. God, that's a flop now. Yeah, I know. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> so, and it also fought alongside the you know great movies of the original Austin Powers that that opening month, Commandments, Underworld, Jurassic Park, The Lost World. So that was what it was fighting with at this point in time when it was released. And as you know, if there's anyone you know that's much younger than was than us. was that the first Austin Powers? Yeah, that was the first Austin Powers. Yeah. That was at the height of seven. Yeah, that was nineteen ninety seven. Myers. Yeah. No. The shrek. mighty have fallen. Mike is still up there. <laughs> yeah, he he can be. That but is not a statement as to his worth of true. ability. Well, but if we're talking about true. net worth. He's still Jesus up there. Christ. Yeah. He's 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 set. So. Fifth Element was the most expensive foreign, and I'm putting quotes around foreign, uh, film to be, made, to be made uh, by a U.S. film production company at that point in time. Uh -huh. uh, the domestic return would have been considered a flop completely because uh, production was nine, $90 million and the domestic return was only $63 million. Was this the hit of DVD time? This is DVD strength time, right? Like everyone had finally switched over from VHS by 97. Yeah. No, roughly around the Matrix, so about ninety nine. I think Matrix was ninety nine. Yeah, it was so that was when 90s. people were really starting to turn over to DVDs. Okay, because I remember I had this on VHS initially. Yeah, and then, I, I think I did too. And then DVD, and then Super Bit, which is like high def DVD, right. but without high def. Um, <laughs> yeah, but internationally, it brought in over two hundred million dollars. So that doubled the production costs. Which made it not a flop. So in all, it made about three hundred million dollars. So that was. I mean, it's still probably pulling in something. They just put it, pull it off Netflix. When we were looking for it, I actually had to go back to my old DVDs and go, oh, there oh, it is. Oh, same here. Yeah, same Netflix. here. And uh, Luke Besson stated in a couple interviews after that he wished he would have waited a few more years because of the digital graphics that were so much better. I did see a yeah. couple. A couple lighting and I looked. There wasn't that much bad graphics. No, what were you watching it on? I was watching it on Blu-ray. I haven't watched it on Blu-ray yet. Did it, it say crisp. remastered on it? <laughs> because I, I, I have the original DVD, and you 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 can tell that there is there is a sharp disconnect. There, but there's there's not that many moments of actual computer graphics. There's so much special effects in that movie yeah, yeah he i think he said that there were only like 238 graphics in that movie that i know the generated. reconstruction was yeah that was the biggest the biggest yeah. one uh and then the flying cars the yeah. you know that was another one big one whereas this new movie valerian has some like 3,000 visual effects done yeah on it, so the, it's just like the tonalities on the car against the buildings and whatnot mm -hmm. which honestly it, with the exception of like the crowded scenes probably could have been done better with like models i agree yeah there's just, there's just something about it and i don't know if we'll ever cross that like uncanny valley between something that is real that you can see mm -hmm. and something we can create and model what do you mean um the eye detects a million things that you don't consciously think of mm -hmm. 
And when you see something that is uh, computer generated, you know it's computer generated. Yes. Um, and I don't think that we will ever be able to achieve the level. Well, I don't know about ever, but within our lifetimes, of of the the subtle interplay of all the interconnecting bits. I get that. I'm sorry. I should be more specific. You're referring to scenes with models or the crowd scenes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like uh, when when she's on the ledge and she's staring down and there's all the cars going that way. I yeah. can totally understand why you don't go with models on that one. Ah, yeah, the gotcha. wires yeah. themselves would make that a problem. Okay. But, um, yeah, like I, I watched it on an, on an old DVD and I, you, you could definitely tell where those points were. Mm-hmm. I watched it in beautiful 4K. <laughs> oh wow! Oh I bet that. I bet that. That's pretty. I bet there were. I had to pause it a few times. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a great movie. Did you clean up after yourself on that one? Didn't need to. Okay, that's good. I'm efficient. <laughs> well, I've I've only actually seen this either a streaming on a, a 720, mm-hmm. which is what that TV over there is, or on uh, an DVD. old SD fucking CRT TV. Oh, the CRT TVs. They were in everywhere in the oh, future. Oh, I yeah, love that. Everywhere. Anyway. Oh, and the 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 uh the interface panels for the spaceships. Oh with yeah. Those, like four color mm-hmm. gra- <laughs> I was like, oh God, what is this alien all over again? <laughs> if if you if you pause it on a lot of the scenes, you'll see that the the monitors because they wanted to make it a different language, but they didn't have the money to make a different language because everything went into more production. They just flipped the screen. So yeah. words are backwards. Yeah. So, yep. And oddly enough, on the the whole thing about the the language, uh, Luc Besson and Mila, I never yeah, know what is her language. I okay, was so about so that. yeah, so they they went it's in. A, it's a Latin root. No, isn't it? they made up their own language, and they were writing letters back and forth to each other to practice it. It's like it's a four hundred so word good. language. I really liked it. That they that Luc Besson and Mila mm-hmm. Jov- Jovovich, I think that's how you pronounce her last name, uh, Hohovich. I, I just I, liked her saying it. Yeah. Uh, you can definitely hear there's some definitely some like Italian, there's some Latin in there. Yeah. You know, there, there's a, it's a mesh of different words and it is really pretty and fun to listen to. But it's in doing my research in the movie, it it was something that they created, um, like Tolkien created Elvin. Yeah. So I, I guess that could be equated to it, only not as pretty. Well, I've never seen it written, but uh, I, I was just I mean. Not not only the language, her native tongue, she was speaking, but when she began to pick up English, mm-hmm. um, please help. help! Oh my God! I mean, <laughs> she could be basically be saying, "Burn babies and let me eat them," for all she knew. But still, Burn please help was so pretty. Babies. <laughs> well, it it gets into an interesting point when you're talking about like the struggle of an absolute alien, right? Mm-hmm. There's there's no commonality uh, beyond what that creature looks like yeah right this is a, a created being mm-hmm. and it has has no no frame of reference but and it has 400 dna strands remember yeah. that so it could be so anything. she falls through the roof of corbett dallas's cab and she's in a situation where the police are chasing her she doesn't understand she probably realizes she's in trouble mm-hmm. but that when she just turns to him and does the the, the plays Help. Help. And it's just it's goddamn tear jerking. No, I it mean, is. <laughs> I agree. I just I mean I mean there are literal tears in her eyes yeah. at the same time. It's like I'm there's we Okay, get serious here. As humans, one of one of the most terrible things that make people jump off buildings and puppies howl in the night mm-hmm. is um loneliness. Yes, I agree. And completely this is a completely alien creature and she's in this horrifying situation mm. and she reaches out to our hero and he doesn't want to, you know? Yeah. You <laughs> can definitely like, see the, like, I, you know, I mean, I, I've it, got it, one point left on my, on I, I gotta, my I gotta, get the, I gotta get the cab to get you it back it in and get a six month over. And this is like, he's talking about this whole minutia of his, of his little everyday mm-hmm. life. And that fuck it moment uh, where he just goes for a beautiful girl has fallen out of the sky. <laughs> My old life is toast. I can't even drive this cab tomorrow. We're doing this. Yeah, it was. It, that was the one of the moments. So I think, especially the original time you saw it, where you mm-hmm. went, "Oh wow!" And you probably didn't even realize you did it because it was it was done so well that it's 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 playing on the parts of you that you don't con- 
you know think about yeah in, in i agree normal thing it's that that uh that strange thing reaching out and you're going yeah okay we're gonna do this <laughs> her expressions of joy oh were my god yeah awesome like the little giggle mm-hmm. and the the big old grin that she did it was, it was amazing yeah she, she was, ha. Yeah. <laughs> oh speaking of like even the bit players can we talk about those guys for a second oh, oh sure please oh, yeah please can I, we yeah look Let's uh, let's 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 go into some of the 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 more things that that we liked about it. Um, I liked the 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 initial fucking methed out drug dealer guy. Oh, God, give me the yeah. cash! <laughs> Do you know who that guy is? No, I I saw his name on the credits, but I didn't recognize it. Who's he was the love interest in the movie Amelie, and oh, he's also shit. a very accomplished French director. Yep. Well, <laughs> I love. I, I love his thing, right? Oh, what's you, his you story this, up to this, that point? This yeah. well, that's that's where we get into the other half of this podcast because I, I got to tell you, I want to play in this world in that <laughs> metropolis. Um, but uh, I, I, it's 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 such a methy plan that he has. That, oh okay, my god! I'm going to take the picture of the hallway. I'm going to strap <laughs> it to my head. <laughs> I didn't even pick up on that until like the fourth or fifth time I saw that. Movie. Seriously, oh my I god. thought he was just wearing a weird ass hat. No, no, no. no, no, no he was going to fourth or fifth time I realized. Oh shit! He's gonna yeah. rob. He's gonna yeah. he's gonna jack Corbin Dallas. Yeah, <laughs> give it a guess. <laughs> and then the dance afterwards, the shuffle, and the feet. That's I, I actually. You can give it. I, have I this, don't need it. it. I have this uh, uh, Ruby Rod's henchman mm-hmm. when they're screaming for him in the oh, ballroom. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> everyone, everyone was a great actor. Like everyone committed to these seriously ridiculous lines, yeah, he, where he, you have to stop and laugh at literally yourself thousands the of most times. Literally the most unsung character in the whole movie. It's Finger. Oh, on the phone? On the phone. Yeah. He is uncredited. I, and I, and I, nobody and I know to that this voice. Day knows specifically. No, no, no. Who I it know is. that Wait, voice. Is, I, I Finger being, being the henchman, right? No, no, no. 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 The, his boss, the cab company boss. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about Zorg's no, sidekick no, no. guy, because I know who that is. But yeah, who's who's the voice for Nobody knows. Oh, I huh. know. Because I, I heard it and I go, I know who that is. Everybody thinks they know who that is. It's just that guy.com. So No, no, I, I can figure this out. I'll bring it up in a couple weeks. Okay. Okay. Now what about the guy? What about Corbin's neighbor? He's gotta know the whole deal with the cops, right? I mean the one, everybody the, the, who lives in that world knows how the cops work what? yeah why does he do that may what the the the, the smoke you guy yeah okay what's his so story i have a question about him i've always wondered about him <laughs> that's the same guy that that is is in the the air in the, in the airport that gets taken away so they the the cops take him away take him and then, then he, the mangalores yeah. kill the cops and yeah. take him thinking mm-hmm. that he is corbin dallas yes. right so then they kill him and take his form because that's what Mangalords do. Okay, that's something I always question about, and I've loved the movie. But I never, I never put that two and two together. But okay. what is that dude's story? I want to, I want to see, I want to see another movie of nothing but <laughs> ten to fifteen minute, maybe five, five to fifteen minute segments mm-hmm. of everything else that's happening behind the scenes. Like right. I want to know. Oh, that would well, be great. I mean, if it's a four hundred page script, I'm sure there was a lot more. I, mean, I want to know the last. Two hours of that man's yeah. life. Yeah. What led up? Why did he do that? Well, I want to know. You, you, when when you look at uh, at the population of the planet and Corbin's living condition, right? He's he's basically in this walk-in closet. Yeah, micro slum, basically. Yeah, it's it's analogous to a lot of the the hotels that they actually have in Japan right now, mm-hmm. where it's multi-use features. And you 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 get the feeling that the cops are used to coming there, yeah. Because <laughs> you can see them like basically sigh. It's like exasperated. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, God, we're we're, we're in again. another mega block. Yeah. You know, fumbles yeah. for the right key. Yeah, yeah, uh, to slide in there. But there are there are a lot of like good like other characters that you you both mentioned, like the. Uh, uh, the stone cold deaf, you know, football player, baby yeah. red. Yeah. yeah baby Who, red. What's yeah. his story? Yeah. You know, the whole time he's an he's actor, like, not a football player. Oh, I thought he was a football yeah. player. I thought he was too, until I just watched it. Yeah. I watched it. it. I thought he was an actor. Was a... Yeah. Yeah. Star of stage oh, and screen. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, star okay. of stage and okay. screen. Okay. All right. And then the, uh, there was uh, a laser ball player. Yes. In there okay. That's what I'm confused immediately yeah, after. The, the blonde guy. Yeah. I've always, the deaf guy. Yeah. The deaf guy is baby Ray. Want to know his story. Who is he? What's the story up to that point in his life? I don't know, but I like that the characters are not merely vehicles for our main characters to advance the plot. 
I mean, they're fully realized in their own. I mean, they're coming here with a ton of backstory. No, I, I agree with that. And I agree that that all of the satellite characters are very rich and deep and they're very three dimensional. Mm -hmm. But for the core group of players, the only two that I really feel that are that have depth and are the only ones that feel depth that, and, and three dimension are Corbin and, and Lilu. Oh yeah, uh, Cornelius is is just kind of there. He just helps push the plot along because I I have this book and it talks about and I need and I know where we're gonna go. So that's why he's there. His sidekick is just kind of again there. He saved the world. No, he saved the world. They had no idea what to do. Yeah, he's the one who he, he, he solved he, the puzzle. He literally yeah, saved but up the world. Until that point, he was just kind of like just there. I love his hat too. What was that band that wore the red version of that? Oh, that Devo. Was Devo. Yeah, Devo. I love that hat. <laughs> that is what a whacked out priest wears. You know, some strange cult. That priest also actually lived very opulent in a very opulent life compared to Corbin Dallas. Oh, his house. Yeah, when, when his he apartment. Lilu yeah, out there? yeah. Oh my God! Right. And what what's odd about that is you can draw some conclusions that way, right? Because when he first stands up, when when he introduces himself to the president as the 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 evil ball of death mm-hmm. is is coming, um, like behind him, did you did you notice uh, the rest of the priests of yeah. all the yeah the, the, the rabbi the, the, the rabbi priest, and none of them cardinal. none of them told him to shut the fuck up and get out of the way because the big boys are here yeah. to deal mm-hmm. with it, which means that the acceptance of whatever the hell he represents. Is very mainstream. Yeah. But they also, they weren't really, they, they let him do his thing. I noticed that. They let him do his thing, but they also weren't like intently listening to him. They were doing their own thing at the same time. So what you said has merit, but it could also be like, okay, we're going to go ahead and let you talk because we're figuring this out and you have yeah. your five minutes and then we'll have ours. So again, that's one of those little side side stories. It would be great to know yeah. more about like Nathaniel was commenting on. So there's, the, yeah, there's so many questions in this. It's a it's a great story. It's a great movie. Uh, it, it is it is pure brain candy, and uh, and it's lovely. Uh, so, how do you see this in the, in the in the game universe? No, wait, not yet, not yet. Okay, <laughs> I, I want to talk something. Okay, sorry. All right, the cigarettes that are all filter. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> to I quit love that. is your goal. I, I I love I love I love that. It's okay. So we passed a regulation, right? Cigarettes have to be filtered. Well, they have to have a warning label. Well, you can only get this many, and they're dispensed once a day. Well, we still think you're smoking too much, so we're going to double. No, we're going to tri- no, we're going to quadruple the filter. Like, I mean, it just <laughs> it, it speaks to a um, a bureaucracy gone mad, and it does so in such a little silly way. Yeah, and well, that that's so good. the The whole movie does show nothing but like a corporate style living structure because. He's not just the president of the U.S. He's like, if I remember correctly, he's president of the world. Yeah, yeah. So not just the, I, I think it was more than the world. It's, it's the it? federation. Yeah, the federation. Yeah. So All the combined worlds or something. There was yeah. president of something. Yeah, All worlds or. And I, I want to talk remember. about one thing that actually really bothered me. This this was my my point in the movie that I went, ah oh, man. What's that? Okay, so I had ar- I've already spoken about how much I like the ships and how mm-hmm. much uh, of a realistic design that is, mm-hmm. and how much I like this and how much I like that. So. If you were defending a sphere of space and wanted to put up a border sign, mm-hmm. how would you do that? Would it be a line <laughs> in space? Yeah, I know. Or would I know it where be you're a glow? Yeah. <laughs> and when, uh, when apparently nobody thinks three dimensionally on those things. Well, I, I and that's no what one ever me. thinks three dimensionally in sci-fi. It's, it, space it, is always everything's on an equal level. And that I was reading a, a post about that from I think it. I want to say it was either Star Wars or Star Trek from back in the day that mm-hmm. they knew how, oh, how space ships or battles battle. would happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they chose to put things on an even plane so that the viewer could have yeah. more of a frame of understanding what was happening. Yeah. So that now, it would make more sense. Now that I bring sense. it up, it, I, I actually have a theory. There's the, the plane of the ecliptic mm-hmm. where, you know, more or less things rotate around. That's where all the stuff is. Mm-hmm. If you're approaching a planet, you would probably come in on that path because mm-hmm. you're passing by fueling stations. You're stopping by check-in points. Yeah. You're, okay, so I suppose that makes sense as a border crossing, but I still didn't like it. Yeah, I wanted it, a globe. The, 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 yeah, the same thing was used in uh, The Last Starfighter with the, yeah. uh, with the Frontier. Another science thing. I, I, I'll, I'll bust through these facts. No, okay, no, yeah, it's totally cool, totally cool. When, when, when they're rebuilding Lilu, they bombard her with uh, 
slightly greasy solar atoms yes. to make her skin grow. <laughs> now, that is scientific terminology, if I've ever heard it. Slightly greasy solar atoms. And they had a conveniently placed small-sized uh, booty shorts. You know, yeah, just, and, just and, ready, and, ready to be put on whoever this was. And, and the thermal straps, oh, which yeah. really... Yeah. Uh, there, there's so many good lines in this, like uh, the robot bartender that mm. terrifies me. You want some more? <laughs> <laughs> I, that that's a direct shot at my career. <laughs> yeah, there there are there are a lot of great lines. And Ruby Rod gives most of them. No, uh, no. But Co- Bruce Willis has a lot of really Bruce good Willis ones. and her specifically talking to each other. I think she knows it's a multi pass. <laughs> yeah. That, that anyway, is, yeah. we're in love. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think Bruce Willis and Ruby Rod have some really good ones, especially like. When they meet and then they're in the hallway and Ruby Rod's trying to get more information, get him to talk, and he just picks him up and puts him against the wall and tells him basically shut the fuck up and I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. here for your show. Are we green? Super green. Yeah. <laughs> Super green. Did anyone else notice uh, the the two bomb sequence when uh, the the bomb they're bombing the hotel right to, yeah. Yeah. to cover oh, the yes. tracks? So he goes back right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zorg goes back and he deactivates the bomb and is you know it's very close to the wire. And turns around, there's another bomb, mm-hmm. right? And yes. uh, the, the space orc, I, which is what I call them in my mind. Yeah, that's what they are. Um, he's, he's wounded and he's laying on his back and he holds up the detonator mm-hmm. and he goes, for the honor. Did anyone notice what the detonator was? No. It's a high school combination lock. <laughs> it's, it's literally the little the little tourney lock with the that's little clasp awesome. with an LED right in the middle of the dial. And that's all it is. And I went, that's how they save some money right there. Exactly. <laughs> you know? A uh, little bit of trivia: uh, Gary Oldman and Bruce Willis never share screen time in this movie. They are never in the That's same. True. They never interacted throughout the whole movie. Though they did share a scene. Which scene? Uh, when he's coming back to disarm the bomb, they Gary Oldman's coming down the hall, and Bruce Willis is ducking through that door oh, with everybody okay. to get on his oh, they, shuttle. Okay. They yeah, they walk, just they they, they pass. Yeah, and the, yeah, okay. like time. literally two seconds. Yeah. I mean, okay. th- that that was yeah. one take. So. My my other favorite character, though, circling back to that, and then and then we'll kind of push on, is the uh, the little the... elephant thingy. <laughs> <It was No>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I I I like the um, the the Asian diner, floating Asian diner. Yeah, with uh, you, you are fired. fired. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I got free lunch. Oh, good philosophy. I like his mom too. You miserable bastard. I never should have pushed you out. Ma? <laughs> no. Hello, everyone. You are listening to Half Movies Will Game, and this is Nathaniel. We're about halfway through the show, with a lot of exciting RPG content coming up in just a minute. First, I want to take a very quick moment to tell you a bit about what we're up to here. We recorded these first four episodes as a proof of commitment to ourselves before we went forward with an official launch. We learned a lot through this process, upgraded our equipment a little bit, and figured out some tricks that we didn't really know going into the thing. We hope you can hear our improvement as the show progresses. Please bear with us as we iron out the wrinkles and know that we appreciate any feedback you have for us, especially so at this crucial early juncture of the show. In the future, this break space will be used to promote our friends and sponsors, and we're excited to talk more about them. So thanks again for making it this far, and I hope you will enjoy the rest of the show. All right, so we're back. Um, I feel much lighter, drained. We didn't spend the last seven minutes talking about energy drinks and uh, discontinued beers from the 90s. So what we're going to do now is take uh, what we liked about the game, uh, about the movie and translate it into um, a more gaming term that's that's the whole point of what we're doing here i gotta say i mean nate i know you you have a lot on this but i i really want to run around in that city that that city oh i agree the the metroplex is fascinating to me yeah I, i've i've been looking forward all week to like what game you're gonna bring to the table but don't boom on this i think we should start and kind of pick up the thing that we did in our special lost episode and that is opening with Take it to D and D. You know we're all familiar with D and D. Okay, how would you classify those characters? We'll start with oh right, Corbin right. Dallas. Corbin Dallas. Uh, I would I would go for the the is an, a fighter ex fighter. Um, yeah, that's where I would go with Corbin. I think. I think standard fighter. I think mentally he's at that stage 
but he he's failed this obviously. But he's at that stage where you start attracting uh, followers and start working on your stronghold. He's reached name level. Yeah, he, but he's absolutely failed at any part of administration, which is why he's living in this tiny little shoebox in the shitty part of New York. That's but I, I would say the same. He is he is a a, a mid high level fighter, uh, probably in the area of like uh, eight. Eighth, eighth level. I would say terms? I would I would say probably twelve to thirteen. No, well, depending on the addition. Well, yeah. good point. Yeah, but he's he's obviously we, where he points the gun, he hits. I mean, he's rolling strong. He's got a lot of pluses. Well, he's definitely got some feats. I mean, I I, I yeah, I think he's probably level. He's 12. moving and firing a lot and hitting what he's got. I mean, he's got two attacks. Yeah. So I I would go say what what do you got? I propose that I just thought of this right now. <laughs> yeah. Fallen Paladin. Ooh, like yeah. you said, he's gotten to that point where he had a lot of power and he mm-hmm. could have attracted some followers, but completely failed at it. Maybe it's because he fell from grace. He seemed to have been the only person who survived his unit in a war. Yeah, we don't know anything about that. He's, war. he's lost his wife. He's, he's very, his wife. very contemptuous of uh, the military, military. The, church. the church, church, and but the yeah. military. Yeah. yeah, can't stand either of them. No, that's a very good point. Yeah, he may be I a like do, you, do you get? Do you get to keep? I, I forget. I've played. You're, you're basically once. a fighter at that point. Yeah. yeah, you fall from grace. You lose. lose yeah, you lose all of your paladin powers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then you keep. But going he still has a dude who can hit things with a sword, and he still had the memories because he had all the medals on the shelf. So yeah, yeah. so yeah, the, the tortured fallen fighter. Yeah, I I like that. Okay, Ruby Rod. Ruby Rod is a bard. You yeah, I totally. He's a, a bard. Yeah, he's a high level one too. I mean, he, how, I many, how many how many half Half elf. Uh, I think he's too extroverted for any elven blood. Yeah, I I, I would. That's that's a human. How about gnome? Gnome, maybe Kender. Oh God, Kender. (laughs) Yes. As much as I hate to say that word, I know you do. That's why I brought it up. Absolutely correct. Ruby Rod, Kender Bard. Yeah, he is a Kender Bard, and I and I think if you want to put it in. In the like, high pitched squealing, yes, but in, in like D and D mechanics, because he is so high level and, and he's such a high profile yeah. character, he doesn't like because Kenders will take everything that they see. They're kleptomaniacs. I think those people that he surrounds himself with, all of his assistants, are the ones that are actually stealing for I, him. I disagree. I think he, I think he's just moved to a point where what he's taking uh, is specifically from the ladies. Oh, that, that's, that's his. He's not after. Yeah. Did you see those stewardesses? Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Oh, and the princess that, yeah. that he recorded. The, yeah, their, their... I mean, he's 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 stealing, but he's not doing it he's the same way. Stealing with <laughs> yeah. quotes under quotes. Lilu Dallas. That's a hard multi pass. Half of me wants to say rogue. Uh, I mean, she she does kind of hide through the whole movie. Yeah, so. I mean. She, she's she's very violent when she can set the situation to her own advantage and she's very effective. But when taken unawares without that prep time, you know, she she gets beat. So I'm 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 going with Rogue Final Answer and I'm going to say about wow, god, when she breaks into the diva suite and whoops ass. Uh 10? Level 10? See, I I like the idea of a rogue, but I I like more and this may kind of eh. Oh, and Elvin. She's definitely Elvin. I, I think she's she's a monk, personally. Ooh. She doesn't use she doesn't use any she doesn't use any weapons, nope. but she can bust some ass. No, you're right. I'll, and, I'll, I'll be to- overruled. Yeah, monk. okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Score one for Dusty. Uh like yeah, because she's <laughs> total you know, uh, the, knows everything going on. Yeah. She's got the religious thing. Uh yeah, I think she is just a quiet contemplating monk until you yeah, push her too far. Yeah, but she's the one that has a, a priest background that they're yeah. working with. I, I can't. Yeah. There's no argument to that. He's and right. Yeah, I would go with Elf. I would agree with that. Yeah. I would also propose that everybody else is basically an NPC. They don't really have well, that much. Cornelius, I think, rides the line. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is NPC, but he's not. He I, basically he, does nothing. He's a cleric. Obviously, yeah. he's a cleric, but... Um, he he, exposits, he pushes. Yeah. yeah, he pushes the plot out. Yeah. He's a plot tool. <laughs> He's my favorite actor. <laughs> um, I don't know who else. Who else did we have in this? Uh, we had. Uh, it was Zorg. Yeah. We, you know, we never really Zorg. even talked about Zorg. But Zorg well, that was one of the things I wanted to get to. But Zorg's a bad guy. Well, yeah, he's the villain, obviously. He's not yeah, the, we went an entire he's, episode and barely. He's even like a he's, bad he's, merchant. He's not. He he's he's not the boss baddie. He is the level baddie. Let me talk yeah. about. 
him for a second. The please, please do. The on that guy. The what? The cojones. Okay. The oh, yeah. I thought you said guy. Hollandaise for a second. Yeah, the Hollandaise <laughs> in this guy. He gets a direct dial call across the universe from the source of ultimate darkness. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And he haggles with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's my some... prices have tripled <laughs> while, while he's bleeding. What? Yeah, he's his, bleeding brain. Out of his brain. Yeah, and he's haggling. Yeah. with the out ultimate plastic Incidentally, thing. There's not an orifice on top of the brain to bleed out of. So, whatever is happening, the pressure is building to a point where it's it just coming out of the, the skull. Yeah, uh, it's it's gone through the the fluid that protects the brain, splits the skull, breaks the surface, and is bleeding. And he is still trying to cut a deal. Evil no and, and even and then he was even yeah. polite at the end of it. He was like, you know, thank you. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Little um, things. So, I'm trying to think of who else. I mean I don't think there's anybody else really. Yeah, that, that was really it. Yeah, that's really about it. Was so, it- so stepping away from D and D. Which you're glad to do, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know where this comes from, but I guess it's gonna become a running gag. I don't hate D and D. I love He hates D and D. Really like it sometimes. It's okay. He wants now, wizards. Of the coast. He wants <laughs> we do take bribes <laughs> and sponsorship, or even so dice. I want to talk about. I want to talk about a gaming elephant in the room, please. Yeah. And that one we've talked about before, and we're going to be talking about this game many times. And this game is Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds is a extremely approachable, universal, generic, open ended mm-hmm. pulp action game. Many might think that this game would be perfect uh, for Fifth Element. And I wager, yeah, you could probably run this in Savage World. I, I have a game in mind. And as we spoke of last week on our, I guess, beta episode, I'm, I'm not terrifyingly familiar with this, with this game. But I, I have a game in mind that totally fits it. But let's... But I want to finish with Savage Worlds and say that Savage Worlds is not the game I want to talk about this week. And we will probably bring it up as a runner up in almost every episode that we do. And occasionally we'll probably highlight it. Well, I know there's what- a lot of Savage Worlds fans out there. I have written for Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds, it's the game that I am most familiar with more than any other. But I don't think it's perfect for the fifth element. We should probably put in a disclaimer here. At this point, we have taken no money from everyone. Anyone. <laughs> <laughs> we have not universe. taken any money. No, no, no. Yeah. Now, what was the game that you were thinking? I, I have a 50-50 toss-up. Given the diversity of the various races and life and the mega cities, I would say it's a toss-up between Shadowrun and That's what and I was going to say. I was going to go with Shadowrun. I didn't even think of either of those two. Uh, yeah, really? They could totally the, work. The dimensional... Definitely work. And it, it seems like they're, they're all familiar... Like, uh, and uh, God, words, how do they work? Uh, that they're all familiar to humans. There's no culture shock by seeing an alien species. The, the shock comes from uh, the violence of the space orc. But everyone knows what they were. Everyone knows what they come from, their basic motivations. There wasn't an unknown alien in this, which stipulates that it's, it's a, a multiracial world. And you're saying this in... Favor of Rifts or Shadowrun? Uh, in Rifts specifically, Shadowrun could be made with, with its see, rule set. Uh, Shadowrun. So Shadowrun recently came out with a version called Shadowrun Anarchy, mm-hmm. and I could, yeah, I could definitely see this playing. In okay, Anarchy. I'm only familiar with the late '80s version. Myself. With the which my favorite version, by the way. <laughs> but Shadowrun suffers from a heavy slowdown at the table. Oh yeah, it's constant checking of modifiers. And Shadowrun border is not not even borderline. Shadowrun is a gear porn kind of game. Yeah, like okay, you spend more time gearing your character up and coming up with lists of things that you want to use. Many of which you will never get to use, and many of which just lay on your corpus when you die. Right. Shadowrun is also very brutal. Mm-hmm. There wasn't that much brutality. For well, except when he dug the rocks out of her belly on stage. But <laughs> <laughs> what's her story? How she? How did the rocks get there? What? What? Okay, again, we, we should probably do an entire <laughs> follow-up episode. On, on like, characters. My yeah. questions have questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Rifts, Rifts, that's, uh, ooh. Yeah, Rifts is, is set on Earth. Mm. And the, the problem I have with Rifts being the game for this, and why I'm very interested to hear what you have to say, is that Rifts is Earth-centric when magic comes back. I saw... Okay, the dif- the difference between religious magic and magic magic. Mm-hmm. I-, I saw nothing that couldn't just be advanced technology here, even the opening of the stone. 
It's it's you know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I I don't know that riffs is the absolute certain, but it was it was the reaction to the normal everyday human seeing the alien that made me think of riffs. There was uh, a supplement for rifts called phase world yeah that oh, i remember that into the stars do you have it on your shelf i over don't here? i don't uh, phase world would actually be pretty good for the fifth element it has a if number you of didn't classes try to play it you could probably <laughs> you could probably say that lilu is maybe an invincible guardsman or even a cosmo knight yeah. if you're playing phase world uh ooh, interesting i i really i wanted to love rifts so bad I love the art. I love that it segs what it seg segs whatever, uh, in with my favorite property of all time, which is Robotech. Yeah. Um, yeah. That it, it just they they meld That's seamlessly. But if you've ever tried to play those early Palladium games, they're rough. My best friend as a kid tried to get me into that system. I and want to love them and I'll buy them shit. for the art. But oh, oh, the God. art was beautiful. Yeah. But I just could never. It, it was. So so tedious and as a kid trying to get into a new gaming system mm -hmm. outside of D D, yeah. it was like what what the fuck what man? is this just, I, I don't understand i will attest that old school first edition palladium fantasy is a completely playable game is it completely playable it is very low power very low key it doesn't have that many variables to keep track of it's once you get into the megaversal game yeah. like mm -hmm. robotech or rifts and you start adding on all of these extra layers and the power creep that the game becomes, to me, unmanageable. Okay. Well, I also attest, my theory is that no one has ever picked up a Rifts book and learned how to play from it. My theory is that everybody who knows how to run Rifts was taught by somebody right. who was taught by somebody. It's like a virus. Who was taught by somebody <laughs> and so it, on and it's, so it's on. It's the RPG the telephone. Back. It's the RPG it's STD is what it is. <laughs> that's, you that's, have a lot of fun doing good. it. Hey, and <laughs> watch out. We might get sued for that. He, I don't think that... That's a joke. ...that the property's still alive. Oh, oh God, yes it is. I, oh, I it keep, is? I keep okay. In fact, hoping. they just had a Savage Worlds version of Rifts come out last year. Is it play... Oh, of course it's playable. I can bring it sometime. To play, bring it sometime. Yeah, that'd be so, great. Scratch what I was saying earlier. Maybe <laughs> Savage Worlds plus Rifts actually would be a fantastic game for the fifth element. Well, be that as it may, though, what did you have in mind? What did well, you, what did you I, get? When we were first talking about doing the fifth element, I actually didn't immediately have something in brain other than, oh, Savage Worlds. And it's like, I did not want to do Savage Worlds again. We did it in our special Lost episode, and I don't want to be that one trick savage yeah, make world's it a, podcast a, a, a recurring thing yeah i get that but i couldn't think of anything else off the top of my head so <laughs> i actually asked my google plus followers uh hey what do you guys think if you were to play the fifth element what were what what game would you use i got a lot of good responses uh savage worlds was among them mm -hmm. i saw that and another one that a number of people recommended was a game called fate so I've I, seen it, but I've never even opened the book. I have a little bit of experience with Fate, mm -hmm. and I will preface this by saying I don't enjoy playing Fate. Fate doesn't hit my buttons, but again, I'm going to try and beat objective here. Fate could work if you focus very heavily on the high narrative aspect. G give us some background, because I'm literally I, I've only with this seen system. Fate at like the gaming store. I've kind of flipped through it, but I've never actually played anything in the Fate system. So Fate is a game that comes from Evil Hat, and they push this very high story-driven... Let me see. I think it frequently does pulpy. They had a, a, a game, a Fate game called Spirit of the Century. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So the cover of Spirit of the Century is a gorilla flying a biplane in like Indiana Jones era. Oh, okay. It was, you know, it looks pretty cool. And Spirit of the Century was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. And it led to a lot of really descriptive action. But it also required people who were really going to want to do nothing but improv. There's a lot of improv. Like you is have, it it's very low mechanics. Very more storyteller. High. Well, well, I mean, not like White Wolf storyteller, but it is definitely a lot oh, of storytelling. God, right. A lot of your character sheet is narrative cues. Like you look at your sheet is less stats and it's more descriptive abilities. I could see how that would be an issue, which I think could actually lead to a great fifth element themed mm -hmm. game if you really wanted to get a group of people who were there to just improv 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 and tag each other's things and everybody would need to be on the ball yeah and i that's can the see, problem 
like how like a D&D game, like just the simple dive <clears throat> off the, the terrace behind the bar that he does uh, mm -hmm. in one of the action sequences. I mean, you're looking at 45 minutes. So oh, you, easily you, you, you could be be very right in saying that this is this is more of a of a of a of a heavy storytelling where you just where you just kind of you fly it off and whoever's running it just says yay nay is that is that how this is working or with fate you're given a lot more license to tell exactly what happens so uh -huh. you tag uh, one of your character's abilities and maybe you even uh, somebody pushes what's called one of your aspects and they you know, bring a new story component into play and you have to react to that. Right. Maybe you can work with that aspect and that will give you points to spend on things. I'm really doing a bad job of explaining the whole thing. <laughs> but no, it's, it's good. And from my a, perspective, it sounds good. There is a lot of, as some people will, some people like to derogatorily refer to story games as the kind of pass the stick mm -hmm. kind of game. Like, oh, it's yeah. your turn to tell the story. Fate has a little bit of that, but there's actually somebody who runs the game and they're responsible for moderating but the players do have a lot more control over flair, mm -hmm. description, and even sort of taking the story and moving it forward on their own. Right. So it's it's an experienced group kind of thing where you where you'd want to work with people that you know yeah, you, you know well. You don't just want to join a pickup game of this. Yeah, it doesn't sound like you just want to drop in without having experience either. You know, playing at all or I with think those people. I think fate works very well for people who are experienced playing it. Yeah. Okay. And it also uses weird, the plus minus dice, fudge mm -hmm. dice. Oh, those, okay. I've wondered. So you have to have a feat in role playing, basically, to play the fate system. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, again, I have opinions on fate, but I'm not going to completely, not going to completely discount it. I think fate. Actually, I don't think you have. I'm no, actually very yeah. interested in it this system. It sounds good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah it Fantastic. <laughs> no, you're, you are, you are doing your, your part of the job here and that's, you know, you're not, you're not, you know, trashing anything. You're, you're being, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, stylistic differences is one thing, but I, honestly that now I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to go look at fate now. So you, you should. It, and, and that's kind I of what like the hope with, uh, part of this is the hope that people are like, oh yeah, let me go check that out. You know, yeah. just like with the movie. Oh, I haven't seen this movie. Let me check it out. Yeah. And they recommended this game system. I'm a huge D&D &D nerd. I would never go outside of D&D. &D. Someone might say that. Uh, but it sounded usually do. great. So let me try something new. That's perfect. Yeah. For me, the real winner, the real bring home the bread, break an idiom kind <laughs> of game. The, the game that we want for this is Feng Shui 2. Is that is that in the fate system or is that no. a different game? Feng Shui Two is done by a fellow, a very famous game designer named Robin Laws. He is well known. He even has his own podcast. Hey, Robin, with uh, <laughs> a fellow named Kenneth Height. Now, Robin wrote Feng Shui a long time ago, and it's basically the Hong Kong action movie game. Oh, sweet. Feng Shui, uh, I had never read it, so somebody recommended it to me, and I acquired it, and I have been reading it, and I think Feng Shui Two is perfect. Uh, this was recently kickstarted uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, it's a beautiful game. It really does do a good job of covering all of the archetypes you might want. It has enough tangible mechanics in there to inspire you to, uh, like D&D, &D, to think mechanically. But it right. also has enough narrative prompts on your character to also inspire you to kind of take that action and go wild with the description. Right, right. Um, is this a, a widely co commercially available uh, thing? Like, can you go down to your local game shop and it'll be there? Or is I that something you order online? So. I imagine so. I think uh, any of our local shops here should have them. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Barring that, probably the behemoth of Amazon. Yeah, right. <laughs> Feng so Shui. Uh, so I've, I've brought copies of specifically of the character template. So Feng Shui, the way it works is so it has a built-in setting. Uh-huh. That is eh, not fifth element. Mm, right. I think with very minor amount of tinkering, you can pull it away from the setting and place it in the fifth element. Okay. So, uh, your characters are based on templates. You basically grab like an archetype mm -hmm. and you tweak it just a little bit, but they actually encourage you not to. Yeah. Like, look, just take this and play it because Out of it, the box. Yeah. it really does what you want it to do. That sounds good. And I think... There's 20 or more of these archetypes. That that actually sounds like something I would really like to play because one of the things that, as much as I love creating a character and coming up with the background and everything that, that you always do with a character, it's 
it can be just tedious and it takes an entire session with your friends just to do character creation and development. Archer. I, mean, I you... become one with the arrow. The arrow becomes one <laughs> with your left ventricle. I, I like the way this is written. Leveling up. Awesoming up. <laughs> that, 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 that is good. Gun sticks. Huh. Cyborg. They lost the technology and rebuilt me anyway. I, I like I like awesoming up. When you gain an advancement, you may select from the following options. Add a shtick, which is awesome, yeah. Yeah. for which you have prerequisite Shticks. for the martial arts path. I, I like... Hair Scrounge trigger tech. neck hairs. <laughs> it's like uh, my spidey sense is tingling. So it's got uh, this is just for a range class archer, and the stats look like it's uh, guns with a number on it. Your backup attack, a defense, a toughness, a chi, and speed. So I like I like the cyborg already because like add any of one of these scrounge tech sticks, adrenal. Boy, howdy. I have no idea what that would be. That sounds interesting. Agony grenade, buzzsaw hand, force distributor, helix rethreader, helix ripper, improbability capacitor, internal lockbox juicer, laser goggles, lumbar scorpion, molecular distributor, neurostimulator, personal copter rig, Schrodinger circuit. Now that... That just that just sounds awesome. Yeah, so much of what you can do in the game is uh, ooh, X special again. forces. There's Corbin. Yep, th- that's the one. Yeah, X special forces. Listen, listen, yeah. listen, check this. One of the one of the feats on this cyborg blow up real good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm reading this. Blow up real good. Take X marks of death to make a scrounge tech attack. Damage value twenty. Da 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 da. These uh these classes are very interesting. I'm I'm just going to read them off real fast without going into what they are, but just looking at it, there is a lot of stuff for very interesting uh, games here. Oh, uh, there's Archer, Bandit, Big Bruiser, just a big ass thug, Bodyguard, Driver, Bounty Hunter. There's the Cyborg you just mentioned, the Drifter, the the Everyday Hero, who has uh, a six pack and a Mustang shirt on. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think he's got a mullet too. There's a Exorcist Monk. There's Full Metal Nutball. Um, there's the Gambler. There's the Gene Freak. That's the one I think would actually work yeah, best yeah. for Lilu because of the description of uh, the powers. The, the, well, the Ghost. I, I think the I think the Ronin. Gene Freak, without even looking too much into it, just the title <laughs> of the name <laughs> would have. <laughs> Yay! I, I okay, I'm wrong. This game now. I was I was thinking the Gene Freak would probably be the the scientist that put her back together, but after looking at some of these stats, yeah, that's Lilu. Yep. I I would play this game. This is yeah. This is I would great. totally play this game. The mechanics um, are super fast, you, super you, simple. And you have such a problem when you have a specific character type. One time I wanted to play in a D and D game. I wanted to play just a pacifist healer, and it took hours of convincing to get anything that wasn't on the on the character sheet and it's it's not it's not geared to that i just i yeah. wanted to heal my my character had two tower shields strapped around his body uh, and his arms story. free <laughs> <laughs> i mean you just you just wanted you want to play a specific thing you yep. don't you don't want to go with that and there's all kinds i mean there's masked avenger maverick cop ninja uh old master i mean there is a ton of stuff that's just Magic not covered cop looks awesome yeah Private investigator, redeemed pirate, scrappy kid. Oh, she's adorable. <laughs> it's this little girl in a, in a, you can't see this, but there's this little girl in a pink shirt um, riding a skateboard with a throwing star just well, hang on, her hang on. Let me, let me Let me get to that. Now, hang on one second because oh, Sifu. Uh, the, I, the iPad here is is kind of like slow on some of these. This 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 is Jet Li, right? That, that's that's an old Jet Li movie or that they took Chai that picture fat, from. I think. Which one? Let no, me see. That's, that's Jet Li, man. Yeah, that's Jet Li. Yeah. That's total Jet Li. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this this scrappy kid. Oh, yeah, this God. little blonde like eight year old with with like purple ish shirt, shoes, and a and a throwing star on a skateboard. That that's kind of awesome. Life is simple. You're a kid. You like to have fun, but there are these bad guys who want to wreck everyone's happiness. That that that's a good lead in for a character. Oh yeah, spy supernatural creature. I am. Honestly, I'm really impressed by this game. I'm Swordmaster, Thief, Transformed Crab. There was yep. one archetype that lo- that was basically looked like Mad Max, only uh, you know with with a fro. Transformed Dragon, Two Fisted Archaeologist. Yeah, this is going to lend itself to a lot of movies. Actually, 
butt kicking of. Oh, okay, we're we're out of that. Okay, yeah, I am Swordmaster. If we if we do the you know forty seven round in with Keanu Reeves, yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I think it's a safe bet to say we're doing that. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> that's an impressive game. Yeah, that is. I, I'm I would very I would love to take like a Saturday and 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 play that game. Yeah, I just don't want to play it in a movie. I actually just want to play that game now. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it called again? Feng Shui Two. And what's Feng Shui 2? The 2 is important? It's, this is the second This oh, is the okay. second edition. And, it, and it's in the fate yeah. system? Or is so that... This is its own system. It's its own system. Right. Okay. So you basically, you have a number. That's your uh-huh. skill, your ability. Uh, your, they call it your action rating. So you have your action rating, and then you roll two dice. Mm-hmm. Now you want to have them two different colors. So they recommend having red for your good die mm. and white for the bad die, because white in China is the color of death. Right, okay. So uh, roll the red die, and... Add that to your number, but then roll the white die and subtract that from your number. So you're always rolling these two dice that uh, counteract each other. So right. In a way, uh, the mechanic kind of follows the fate dice because the fate dice have the pluses and minuses. So right. again, you have a number that is your base ability that is basically represents you acting at the best of your ability. And then you roll the dice, and the pluses and minuses will lower that number depending upon how you roll. Right. So in this, mm-hmm. you have the two six-sided dice, but the dice explode. So if you roll boxcars, this is also something weird happens. But if you roll a six on either of the dice, you roll another die and add it to it. Right. And it keeps exploding upward or exploding downward. So that can lead to some crazy high successes or some crazy awful <laughs> failures. <laughs> Sounds like it. Do, do they stack? I mean, can you crit and crit and crit and crit? In both directions. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Ow. Just the critting downward. Yeah. Just ouch. Attempt to sense the motive of the person on the other side of the desk. The world blows up. <laughs> <laughs> you rolled 16 oh my white goodness. sixes. It also has dramatically appropriate gear. So your character might have a few things that they mm-hmm. have, but mm-hmm. you don't really need to write down anything else. You're just right. considered to have it when you need it. Unless it's dramatically appropriate for you to not have it. Uh, for example, Fifth Element. Mm-hmm. Into the movie. Matches. Remember yeah, that match? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's an example of feng shui gear in action. Huh. I, I, I like a, a loose system. And the thing that really grabs me about this game, just from my very brief flip through there, is that they took all the characters that don't easily fit into every other system. I've seen 30 versions of mages, 30 mm. different systems. I've seen 30... Different fighter yeah, types I've seen, agree. and thirty different thieves. But how many two, karate cops have you seen? Yeah, two fisted <laughs> that professor. Was, that was awesome. I mean, karate cop, and that is Jet Li. That is uh, that yeah. is Sifu? yeah yeah yeah. Um, Sorcerer and the White Snake. It looked like his character in that movie. Yeah, I I am just that. That's impressive. That's a new concept, and that's hard to say in this, which is basically a, a lot of the very popular role playing games are just. Different rules for rolling the same dice with the mm-hmm. same names. Yeah. It's just a different system. This is interesting to me. Like, if you read a bunch of Kickstarters, uh, I follow a lot of gaming Kickstarters, uh-huh. and mm-hmm. uh, there's a concept that I'm not even going to delve too deep into it, but there's this concept called the Heartbreaker. And the Heartbreaker is you see a game that somebody's made, and it's clearly their take on another game, and it breaks your heart because you actually see some use, some interesting, mm-hmm. cool new ideas, but the rest of it's just crap. A lot of gaming Kickstarters are straight up heartbreakers, and you look at them, and you can you can basically check off a list. Mm-hmm. Like this game has seventeen classes, right. three hundred pieces of gear, five thousand spells. You're like, oh god, how? Uh. Okay, it's just I, the same thing over and over again. I, I have a question. You as a game designer, do do you ever like email those people and say, hey, I'm a game designer, and you're going down this path, and you're not going to get this done. In the past, mm. I have tried this. Okay. I imagine so that doesn't we, work well. It does not work no? well. No? Okay. Uh, and I'm not alone in this. There's a number of us that have banded together in various online communities mm-hmm. to critique this kind of stuff. Uh, that's good. As, as a writer, I would, I'm putting my book out. I would love to be like, this worked for me in, as a sci-fi book, but it sucked here. Yeah. So as I would think, like I just asked, if people would do that for Most you. Most people who write these games design them in a void. They're mm-hmm. not actually paying any attention to modern game design. They're not following anything that's new. But they want to publish their house rules for D&D that they've been working on for right. 40 yeah. years. Yeah. And suddenly it comes out and they're like, oh, it's the best thing ever. No, dude, I'm sorry. You're really breaking my heart. Yeah. That's that's like as a, as a writer watching somebody craft 
a world and they've spent 15, 20 years creating yeah. this world. And it's like, oh, oh, okay, so you've just carbon copied Tolkien. Yeah. It's just sexy Dragonlands. And as a professional alcoholic, it's like <laughs> watching a new person attempt to drink. <laughs> Wait, does that, does that analogy not stick? <laughs> oh, it works. It works. It's, it's good. I, I actually have no chops in the field. I just wanted to emphasize that. <laughs> you bring what you can to the table. That's that's what it is. Which I felt burn. To do. Yeah. <laughs> burn. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that game, I would play the the hell out of that game. If if I were like you know, I would play it now. But if I were back in, if it were twenty years ago, twenty three years ago, and I was back in high school, and it was my buddies and I getting, you know, we we're gonna hang out all night and play, that would be something that I would probably, be like, yeah. hey, hey guys, check this out, you know, yeah. it would be, that would be Fat Dusty's like game of the week, probably. So, yeah, I, I got nothing else to add. I think that's a, a fantastic choice, and uh, it would certainly supersede my own my own riffs ideal. Yeah, that's the game you should play if you want to play Fifth Fucking Element. Yeah, I agree. I do want to add an honorable mention here. Yeah. Somebody else, actually more than one person, recommended another game called Action Movie World. <laughs> Never heard of it. It's based, it is a, what is called Powered by the Apocalypse. So there's a whole series of games that were spawned from a very popular indie RPG called Apocalypse World, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which is a very simple system, uh, very approachable system, and uh, I'm not going to really go into any details on that one right now. I've never read this game. I don't know anything about it. I can't really talk about it, but it, it sounded pretty cool. Maybe if we come back to another action movie by that point, yeah. I will have looked at this and have more details on it. But honorable mention, it's something you should probably look at as an alternative. Well, I guess it... Uh, yeah? Oh, what? This is, this is going to be an edit point. <laughs> what you got? So if this is actually ever released... And uh, one of the things that we want to do is have voting at the end of our, well, I've been calling them seasons, but I don't think we're going to use that term. Did we decide on a term? Uh, we didn't. No, we didn't. I, I think we didn't. I think we decided we weren't using seasons. Well, until we come up with a better term, <laughs> I'm just going to stick with seasons because we know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Or okay. series or batches. We're going to do batches of four episodes. Yeah. Four episodes. And each one of the games that we ultimately choose, mm -hmm. such as today we have chosen Feng Shui 2, we're going to put them in a vote at the end of these four batches. And you get to vote on which one that we're going to record into a full game. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll actually put it play out it there out. and yeah. play it out on this here table right here. Mm hmm. Um, did we decide if we were doing video? I think we did, didn't we? Yeah, I, I, we talked about doing video last time. I want to. I, uh, I can put it together. Yeah, you have a fantastic setup. Yeah, yeah. you have a, a, a this beautiful 8 by 4 gamer table that you, you handmade, stained it, cut it, everything. That's we have, nice. We have Minecraft torches in yes, here. Yes, and we have and like swords. dungeon walls. And, and I mean by dungeon walls, I mean, I'm not talking like your BDSM dungeon walls. I'm talking like painted dungeon walls. Which is really kind That's of That's awesome. the other side of the studio. We do different, <laughs> films. <laughs> different films there. Anyway. <laughs> That's an entirely different podcast. I, I know think, we so. have Dungeon Masters, but check it out at DustyStreamsAndPain.com. <laughs> oh, my. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah, th there's going to be a voting thing. Uh, we actually would like uh, any feedback you have, uh, positive or negative. We're just... Uh, we're just starting this concept out, but uh, we would we it. would like whoever at this point, no matter how few of you there are, to give us the direction you want us to go, um, which game you'd like to see us play, and which movie with it. Uh, this one was uh, Feng Shui 2 with Fifth Element. So, Feng Shui 2 by so Robert D. Laws. Watch the movie. Check out, if you haven't watched it, you should. If you have watched it, watch it again for the billionth time. And then grab your friends and get the Feng Shui 2 system and check it out. Yeah. Um, so normally at this point, we'd, uh, we'd ask you to send us a comment as to uh, what movie you'd like us to, mm -hmm. to do next. But this is our first one. We're already going to record another one by the time any comment this one gets out. So have we chosen what our next movie is? Uh, on the list, actually, thing funny thing that you should bring that up. The list shows Valerian, but Valerian isn't out until <laughs> the twenty first. For what so, it's worth, I just started writing movies down mm -hmm. and then putting them into categories. Yeah, yeah, I know. So, so yeah, our first yeah. category, the, the in the categories, we have sci-fi, martial arts, miscellaneous adventures. 
war, crime, weird indie, classic zombies, kids, horror, miscellaneous specials, and anime. Uh, so the next one in the sci-fi, if we were to continue down the we sci-fi should, list... We should switch it up. Yeah, I agree. Because otherwise we might just keep <clears throat> recommending the same game. No, I agree. Uh, yeah. but the, the next one in the sci-fi list would have been any Mad Max, but if we want to jump to martial arts... Oh, yeah, let's do that. We have, uh, on our docket, we have 13 Assassins, District B-1-3... Ooh. Hero, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Versus, and Kill Bill. Now this is just a I rough, like brain, <laughs> like this. This was the brainstorming session. My votes for District B thirteen. I've never seen District B thirteen. So Neither. it is a French parkour movie. Okay, kind of post apocalyptic eh, 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 dystopian future parkour movie. Okay, one I, of the most badass things you'll ever see. All right. So are we I, doing? I, I think District we're doing 13? District B thirteen. Yes. B thirteen. Okay. All right. This should be thirteen. All right. Um. Well, I think that wraps it, doesn't it? So we'll be watching that this week. We'll come back with a game next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll go with it. And uh, hey, thanks for listening to our first episode. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Half Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week.